Happy Sunday, Happy Mother's Day, and welcome everyone to episode 23 of Video Game Club. As always, I'm Tyler, and I have with me today, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jiggy himself, Austin. (laughs) Hello. Hello, Austin. And of course, it would not be a Video Game Club meeting without the amazing, the wonderful, Banjo's best friend, Mox. (laughs) Hello. Hello, Mox. How are you? Great. How about you? Good. Uh, (laughs) As I mentioned before, this is Video Game Club, where every two weeks we discuss a game voted on by our wonderful friends in the Bombchu Discord and discuss that game right here on twitch.tv slash TV. And if you can't catch us live, no problem. You can also find us on YouTube. Now, before we get started talking about Banjo-Tooie, what have you guys been playing besides Banjo-Tooie Mox? A a A lot of near. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so much. Way too much. Which is a much. current side quest game. Oh, yes. It's so good. And Neil I... Neil Automata. We're going to have to wait so long to talk about it. And I have so many things I want to say. Start so journaling. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Austin? What have you been playing? A little bit of Nier. I uh, also finally started working on Link's Awakening for Switch. Ooh. Ooh. My wife's been chilling on the couch more, and she told me I couldn't play that game without her being around. And so uh, we were just chilling on the couch. I was like, oh, it's time. It's time. Is it because it's, is it the cute factor? Is that why? No, she just really loved playing that game as a kid. And oh. so I think she just wanted to be there when I played through the, the new version. It is a really cute game, though. It is. Yeah, it is. the soundtrack's really good. It's the only Amiibo I bought. Because I was oh. like, I, I need this guy. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> He's my really child. Amiibo. <laughs> Wait, you only own one Amiibo? Yeah, I I talked with Austin about this uh, a while ago, but uh, long story short, I decided not to commit because if I bought one back in the day, I would have bought all of them. And so oh instead, goodness. I just was like, I'm not, I'm never, I told myself I'm never buying one, never. And then whenever that one came out, I was like, ugh. It's too cute to not own. <laughs> I pre-ordered it. That's how much that I wanted. <laughs> That's how cute it was. Yeah, um, I've been playing some RE8, which uh, so far has been really good, and I'm going to play some more of that today. I heard it's very top-heavy, and the front part is very good, but the rest is kind of blue. Yeah, is that true. I don't know. We'll see. Huh. I just beat Resident Evil Four, so I'm kind of on this like Resident Ooh. Evil kick right now. And I did start Final Fantasy 15 again as well. So, <laughs> the pocket one or the real one? The real one, just because I want to finish that game. And I was told that if I started playing that game, someone else would play Death Stranding. But who knows? Who knows if that's ever gonna? <laughs> I'm happen. going to start playing Death Stranding. I haven't had time this week. You started it in the like <laughs> it was bundle day. And then you were like, all right, Austin. I started up Final <laughs> Fantasy 15. I love the invitation. When are you gonna start Death Stranding? It was like, I'm in the middle of doing the bundle. I've got to finish. But I, I got to get some progress on Nier because I had like three hours in that when I'm supposed to have 10 right now. <laughs> yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Mox making us look bad. Uh, anyway, as a reminder, the nominations for this episode that were suggested by the wonderful Mox included Chibi Robo, Banjo Tooie, oh. and Hotel Dusk Room 215. Um, and of course, Banjo Tooie won the vote. So let's jump in to some Banjo Tooie, shall we? Mm-hmm. Banjo Tooie, a third person mascot platformer collectathon. What is se- what is mascot? It's just like kind of how you describe like Mario, like Mario games and like Crash. It's just like, I don't know, it's just a term Sonic. that's, that's huh. like set in the industry versus like a cinematic platformer would be like uh, like an Indiana Jones platformer type game uh, yeah sorry, um, keep going no no it's the sequel to the popular banjo kazooie uh developed by rare published by nintendo released on the nintendo 64 in north america on november 20th 2000 and in wow. europe april 12th 2001 which it's kind of insane that they delayed it it was never officially released in japan what yep I'm I'm also I'm like pretty shocked actually. I mean I know Rare is what they're a British company, but yep. still. Yeah, there was it was released uh with the 360 release in Japan. 
but um, yeah, never on the 64 cartridge, from what I from what I could tell, at least. Um, so what was going on in 2000 in North America? We had some hardware. Get ready for a wild roller coaster of hardware, by the way. Oh, no. PlayStation 2. Did you guys have one? No. Yep. Wonder Swan Color. What? Did you have one? Oh yeah. What? You is had that? one. I didn't have. I didn't have that, but I remember it always. Any time that I would like go to Fry's or anywhere, I would see it and be like, oh, I should. I, <laughs> my my parents were just like, nope, no more. <laughs> You're good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> And something that's completely just random that's related to hardware is the Satellaview canceled broadcast that year. What? Rip. The nin- regular Nintendo Satellaview. Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. There was a Satellaview for the regular Nintendo? Not the... Or, like, or sorry. Super Nintendo, okay, right? Okay, Super Nintendo. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't even know what but that is. It's kind yeah. of crazy. Like, that's really late, you know? Because... Yeah, Nintendo 64 has been out for a while. Um, software, we had Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Perfect wow. Dark, same year. Wow. Rare, rare, rare work, working hard over here. And then they died. Metal Gear Solid. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid, Baldur's Gate 2, Majora's Mask, Final Fantasy wow. 9, Jet Set Radio, SSX, Paper Mario, The Sims, Wario Land 3. What a year. S- yeah. They don't make years like that anymore. They don't. Banger after banger. Were you, did, were you guys <laughs> playing these games at that time? Uh, some, some of them? them. Yeah. Yes, some. Yeah. Did you guys get The Sims at launch? I got The Sims Hot Date as <gasps> a gift from my aunt, who Whoa. thought that was just hilarious a few years later. And then I was like, I can't play this without The Sims. I guess I have to buy <laughs> The Sims. And uh, I, I, to this day, I still don't really get... It, it's it's not it doesn't appeal to me, but you know, my yeah. wife lo- definitely loves the series. <laughs> oh, me too. I think I started with Live in Large. Oh yeah, that was. And yeah. you got it like when it came with like Live in Large and The Sims, and then from there, I think I bought every single expansion. That for was every uh, game. The Sims Deluxe. I'm pretty sure it had mm-hmm. Live in Large, and then it had like a couple other small items with it. If I remember, I did enjoy the herbs on uh, <gasps> my Nintendo. That's such a good game. Yep. Let's play yep. that next. Did you, did, okay, did you ever we'll play the play Game Boy next. Advance version? No, only the DS version. The Game Boy Advance version was also really good, in my opinion. Um, Are they different stories? I don't know. I never played the DS version. Because they're both The Sims Herbs. Now I have to type Sims Herbs. Getting me. But I, Sims in the City. Okay, that's a different game. I bought Wario Land 3 at launch, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, I need to go back and play 2, because heard, I've heard really good things. And I also bought Perfect Dark, but that was way after it came out. Um, yeah, so Rare and Nintendo, they're quite large companies, so we're not going to go into really detail about them. But when we talk about the development, we will talk about a person who's been at Rare for a very, very long time. And the games that they've worked on and how that's affected the development of this game. But let's talk about Banjo-Tooie. Just a general overview. And yeah, I don't know. I... Ugh. Spoilers with a game like this is always tricky. No, the game doesn't. The storyline matters very little. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so we'll whenever we go to the storyline, I'll put it on, but it's it's not really. The It'll only, be a short spoiler section. The only thing is the end, I think, personally. What but, about yeah. that? Okay, well we'll talk. About I mean the opening as well. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. Okay, which we're showing on screen right now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> so Banjo Two, very similar to Banjo Kazooie, it had uh, worlds consisting of various platforming challenges, puzzles, um, and it had a more focus on pu- puzzle solving than the original Banjo Kazooie. Austin, see. having played Banjo Kazooie, would you agree with that? Heavily. Okay. Mm-hmm. These challenges, along with the exploration piece uh, would usually reward the player with collectibles that would uh, sometimes permit progression. Uh, sometimes not, unfortunately, because that's the world of Banjo-Tooie, which we'll talk about more. Um, <laughs> you would collect these things called Jiggies, which were part, which were also in Banjo-Kazooie, and um, you would bring them, you bring them to a, like a temple, uh, which allows you to build a puzzle, and then you unlock new worlds. Um, musical notes also make a return, but they're used to learn new moves. Um, from Bottle's brother, who's a drill sergeant. Um, Jam Jars. Jam Jars? Isn't that his name? I think you're right, yeah. 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 Which is the best. You, the name, every Everything's name is amazing. Sorry, keep going. No, you're good. You do unlock all of Banjo and Kazooie's moves from the first game immediately, which is really nice. 
Um, and then you acquire several new moves, such as first person aiming, new egg types. Uh, you can play as Banjo and Kazooie separately, which is which is interesting. Um, and then they they also learn moves separately that they can only do separately as well. Um, empty hunt honeycomb pieces return, and so do uh, Jinjos. And uh, yeah, honeycomb pieces allow you to increase your health. I'm not sure what the Jinjos do because I didn't really. You collect them and build their families. So in in one, uh, if you get all five Jinjos in a level, then you get a Jiggy. In this one, they changed it to where if you get all the Jinjos in of one color, then you get a Jiggy. So and the Jiggy is part uh, of like the overworld rather than the right. world that you're yes. in. Well, all of it's kind of connected, right? So mm-hmm. very, very. Yeah, it's hard to. It, for for me, we can talk about that later. But for me personally, it's kind of hard to know like what was the overworld versus not. I mean, you can what? kind of tell, but it's also very connected. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I see. There, you go indoors. Yeah, but then the- when I go to that door, I can actually exit a totally different door. That is not like I could take a, a train, for example, to a totally new level and then exit. And be huh. somewhere else, which made me feel like it wasn't an overworld to me. Is like you go, it, yeah. We can talk like about the paintings, it. I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what I think of, but who knows? Um, Mumbo Jumbo reappears in the game, and he's a playable character. He wasn't a playable character in one, right? Pretty sure. No. Not. Correct. Yeah. Um, he, he, allows- he filled the role of uh, Humba Wumba in the first one. Oh, okay, and he allows you to use uh, magic spells to help you solve puzzles and things. Um, and then, yeah, like Austin said, taking over Mumbo's role was Humbo Wumba, and she's a shaman who uh, allows you to uh, like do like special little. She basically allows you to transform into things to solve puzzles. Um, both of them use these things called globos, which, which are, are so w- cute, which are adorable, and they make the cutest noise and their little feet on the ground. And kind of pointless, if you ask me, but we can talk what? about that later. Yeah. Um, they're better than Mumbo tokens from the first game. Well, At least they're, they're, cute. Just, they're They're just kind of pointless because they're always, like, right next to wherever you need to use them. So it's like, well, why do I have to exactly this to activate this person's power here? I don't know. And Not like we mentioned right. before, a mechanic that was introduced in Banjo-Tooie is this direct connection between its worlds. Um, in Banjo-Kazooie, there was, like, Doors, right? I'm pretty sure. And Gruntilda's Lair that you went in it's still to the, go Yeah, it's to still worlds. that way. There's still doors. But they're connected, though, right? Like, they're all... It, it basically extends, like, the overworld. Saying. and Because you can take the train. The you train the is train. the only thing! No, 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 no. No, it's definitely not the only thing. I no, mean, there are, the worlds are, are connected in different ways, but they're still separate worlds. Right, but so, like, you could be in a level and walk through a door and all of a sudden you're in another level and it and and even beyond the train and then there's a jiggy that is like like it's kind of gray which level it really belongs to and you can only get the level it's in and there are also puzzles well not not necessarily sometimes you get a jiggy from a different level and it counts as a jiggy for a a different level (laughs) Mm. um and there's also puzzles that span multiple levels yeah i'm trying to is that not true at all in uh Kazooie? No, they're pretty. They're pretty separated in Kazooie. Mm. The, the most connection that there is is in each level of Kazooie. There's usually a button that you can hit that will make a jiggy appear in the overworld. Oh, that's or, like that you can then area. go get. Yeah, now that you see it. Oh, that's cool. Mm. Um, in All addition, right, besides the uh, the doors with you know, being connected and stuff, um, there's also the, the train named Chuffy. Uh, and he's used to do like some transportation as well, which we've talked about. Um, yeah, and <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a lot of backtracking and puzzle solving that occurs across these several worlds, um, and that's that's like a lot of the challenges in the game is is this like backtracking and puzzle solving related to the multiple worlds. And of course, this game also included a multiplayer mode because why not? Did anyone <laughs> play it? No, I didn't have anybody to play with. My sister didn't like. <laughs> video games oh i also didn't play it austin have you played it at all i dabbled when i first got it on 360 just to see what was in there and it's made it's pretty much the mini games from yeah uh from the, the single main player. game just with with more with people instead of ai yeah 
I set up, well, you can do like the, oh, what's it called? Where you have the, the first person shooter part. And I just like, I hit a character and then I'd go and find the character that I hit. <laughs> <laughs> I did have two controllers. It, it it was an odd. So this came after Donkey Kong Country, or sorry, Donkey Kong sixty four. Yep. It did. And Donkey Kong sixty four, I think, had a much more interesting multiplayer. What was it? So uh, there, if I remember right, there were many games, but also like there was a, a whole like third person combat mode where they had levels specifically made just for multiplayer. Yeah, and, uh, they, they he was, did. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you would go try to find each other and like it was usually deathmatch kind of situation mm -hmm. I think there were other modes there but like it was a it was definitely a more fleshed out dedicated multiplayer yeah huh. um there is another collectible that I didn't talk about there's these like Cheeto pages did you guys <laughs> use those at all in your playthrough I never got enough um I took them I, I after I got five I took them over to Gruntilda's lair mm -hmm. and got a cheat mm -hmm. and um, I never used the cheat I think it was to give me infinite feathers oh. which when do you ever run out of feathers in this game yeah what? seriously why are the gold I mean, ones I, I I actually never used the gold ones I forgot what? that I had that move because in Kazooie like you had to use it in certain parts in this game yeah. there was just never a time that you needed to use it you, but you could have used it at the stomping dinosaur part no, but you're oh, supposed to I use I didn't think the... about that. Oh. Yeah, but you could well, like yeah. just run through it instead. Yeah, I didn't think about that. But like basically in one of the new features in this one is um the collectibles uh for ammo and feathers and stuff like that are in baskets. Mhm. Mm and so th it, especially next to flying pads, they'll have a bunch of those so you can replenish very quickly. Yeah, it's true. True. Okay. So let's talk about the plot here. Put on that Good old spoiler tag if you <laughs> really care about the plot of this platformer. Um, <laughs> from 2000. Yeah, yeah, from 2000. So two years after Gruntilda's death, or I guess defeat. Um, no, she died. She yeah, died, she okay. she did. She's a skeleton now. She's a skeleton. <laughs> two of her sisters, Mangella and Blabelda, uh, use a large digging machine entitled Hag-1, or H-A-G-1, to enter Spiral Mountain and set Gruntilda free. Upon which they discover that she, while still alive, has rotted into a skeleton while underground. Uh, seeking revenge, she destroys Banjo's house, um, and then they flee. Um, and unfortunately, we lose Bottles. <laughs> That's in the stupidest bottles. way. And he still has ghosts there, like the whole game. Well, towards until the end. Um, yeah, uh, the three remaining friends uh, that were in there which was Banjo, Kazooie, and Mumbo Jumbo because they were playing a poker game of course whenever this happened um, celebrating Grun e Grunty's death right? Or just I like, mean it had been two years yeah, I guess you're right. uh, maybe, yeah. maybe celebrating friends. the uh, anniversary, the anniversary. <laughs> I'm thinking of the party at the end of the Kazooie credits yeah so they, oh, yeah. they decide that they're gonna uh, defeat Gruntilda once more um, you follow the, the trail of the hag um uh, and you arrive at Jinjo Village, um, which you, is like part of a larger island known as the Isle of Hags, which is the game's overworld. Um, you talk to uh, the king, Jingling. King Jingling. Yeah, the king of Jinjos. And he explains about how like all of them ran away whenever the Hag 1 showed up. Um, let's see. Besides that, you the, like her, her and her sisters, it shows like a cutscene where they have this device called the B.O.B. or Big O Blaster. And it, it can be used to, like, just extract all life force. Um, and what it does is it they test it by uh, pointing it at King Jingling and turn him into a zombie. And then the plan... Making him irrelevant for the rest of the game. Until the end, Also, right? yeah, until the until the very end, at which point... <laughs> like, what? what? Why, why do they have him as a zombie that you can go visit at any time? And <laughs> yeah. the music and is so is sad. Yeah, and all he does is hurt you when you go in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that you, they need to, like, recharge it to blast the entire island, and it needs to, like, be charged, um, and so... It's like, and it never becomes a threat again. It doesn't. <laughs> and so then you're trying to, of course, stop Gruntilda from doing this. Um, you get to fight Klungo. Uh, he's the most loyal henchman from 
uh, Gruntilda. You fight him, and he loses a bunch. Um, and yeah, he eventually abandons her towards the end. Uh, you do go to Gruntilda's fortress eventually towards the end, Cauldron Keep, and you compete with. And this is probably the most spoilery part, I think. Uh, you could because I did not see this coming. You compete with Mangela and Blabella in a trivia game hosted by Gruntilda. It reminded me a lot of uh, Jeopardy, kind of. <laughs> um, and yeah, all the the losing competitors are flattened with a one ton weight, which is really funny. Um, you you win the trivia. Gruntilda escapes, and then you reverse the effects of the Bob, and you can you resurrect King Jingling and Bottles. And this this happens after you do a beater once, right? After the first time, Austin, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so this is after you complete the trivia. Yeah. Um, which is 55 jiggies. Right. Um, and then you, yeah, Bottles comes back to life. Um, the, the king is no longer a zombie. And then you have to get to 70 jiggies, I think. So I, <laughs> in terms of story, stop it. Stop at 55. That's that's the good ending. But you don't want to um, fight what's it called grunty runs away and everything's everything is better off if you <laughs> really want to go take her out you can get 15 more jiggies go up and fight her it's a very long fight mm-hmm. um it's a decent fight it's, it's a it's, cool it was, fight mm-hmm. it, yeah it was a cool fight but um the, oh my the God. story the, the story reward afterwards is uh not a reward <laughs> yeah well the it doesn't don't they Everyone's like... pissed off that you took so long to beat her, <laughs> and then the party is ruined. Yeah. yeah. And then you play hacky sack with her head, right? Yeah. And then <laughs> she's like, she, it basically sets up for a Banjo 3 E. Yeah. Which hasn't came out yet. Thank God. Oh! Um, what about nuts and bolts? Oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if uh, we I should speak about I don't think anyone that. considers that to be Banjo 3 E. Yeah. Aww. All right, I'm going to turn off... Machine. Turn off the old spoiler tag. Wait, you didn't talk oh, about... Oh, coming uh, back on, coming back on. Wait, yeah. I forgot. I was going to say now. Uh, oh, I just wanted to say I liked the trivia better than the Banjo-Kazooie equivalent, which was like, I forgot what it was called, but it was like a board game. That's what I also agree with you there. The board the, game... The, oh, the quiz in, in Kazooie was awful. <laughs> well, it was like the... the. I feel like the quiz in Tui is the best part of the Kazooie quiz, which was the trivia part. Whereas there was a lot of like gambling when you if you chose the wrong uh, slot on the board game, and then you have to restart right. if you follow the stupid lot. Yeah, part, there's no checkpoints, so and on top of that, a lot of the questions are built to be unfair. Like, um, well, uh, her sister, yeah, uh, yeah, can what, answer. What's her name? Glen, Glen, Glendilda, or whatever. I forgot. Yeah. She she shows up all over the the hub world, and her only purpose oh. is to tell you things about Grunty. Like that are stupid. Like, like what random, her feet yeah. paste is. Like what her feet smell like, or things <laughs> like that. Very random trivia about Gruntilda that I think changes from playthrough to playthrough. What the answers are for I those think questions. You're right. So you can't even like look them up unless you like figure out what your seat is. Hmm. Um, what was her and, name? Uh, it, uh, it, it's <laughs> it's a very infuriating uh, part of the game because it's like, hey, I'm I'm almost there, and then the all your progress is just like deal with this crap now. <laughs> yeah. Brentilda. Brentilda. Oh, okay. Brentilda Winky Bunyan. That's right. All right. Now I'm taking the spoilers tag off and let's talk about development okay. a bit. Um so Banjo Tooie was developed by Rare like we mentioned before and it was designed by Greg and I think it's pronounced Males M A Y L E S. But if not, I apologize, but I'm going to say I'm just going to say Greg from now on. Um but he he previously worked on Banjo Kazooie and he is definitely considered a legend in the industry. I mean, he worked on things like Battletoads, Donkey Kong Country 1 and 2, DK64, Conker's Bad Fur Day. One of my favorite games, Viva Pinata. <gasps> I uh, love Viva Pinata. Me too. It's amazing. See if the music. Sorry, keep on. The music is really good. See if Thieves and many, many more. Um, he's also one of the longest serving employees of Rare, having worked there since 1989. Just, wow. yeah. So, Wasn't there a time that Rare was defunct? <clears throat> yeah. I think at that point, uh, 
Rare, it was called something else. It was called like Ultimate Play the Game. What? That sounds right. What's Rare Wear then? I don't know. There was Rare Wear. Keep going, sir. Development of the game started in June 1998. And of course, just like any time uh, there's a sequel, um, some of the features that were originally cut during the first game, Banjo Kazooie, um, were added to Banjo Tooie, such as additional worlds, um, multiplayer mode. Um, and there was a, there was another like castle planned, but unfortunately it was, had to be scrapped. Um, but a lot of it was used for cauldron keep instead. Um, there was also going to be a mode called bottles revenge. And this to me is really interesting where a second player could play as an undead version of bottles and take control of enemy characters, including bosses to hinder the duo in their quest. And, um, it was kind of. It was, it was scrapped uh, because they ran out of time to debug some issues, but it's, it, was, it inspired the um, counter-operative multiplayer mode in Perfect Dark, if you guys ever played that. Huh. No, but that's oh. interesting. Have you, Austin? I have not played Perfect Dark. Okay, so there's a, a game mode in it where I haven't played this mode in a long time, so if I get this wrong, that's why. But um, someone plays as uh, Joanna Dark, and then the other player is playing as the AI, like on a campaign level. Like you get to play as like the bad guys, and That's cool. you, the the person playing as uh, Joanna has to like continue going through like do you know do the mission like you would in single player, but you're playing against like a a human on the enemy side while you're trying to do the mission. There was also a feature that was planned to be imp- implemented called stop and swap, and yeah, this would have allowed data to be transferred from Banjo Kazooie to Banjo Tooie, and it was using RAM. I'm pretty sure on the 64, right? Or some sort of, they had some sort of memory that they could tap into. Basically, uh, there was a, a not very well documented feature in the early r- versions of the N64 that when you turned off a game, uh, part of part of that memory would be kept active for 18 or 20 seconds or something like that. Um, that they could, that was enough time to turn off the game, pull out the cartridge, put in a different cartridge, and then read what was. Uh, what was being kept in there yeah and so it was dropped but there it was added to the xbox live arcade re-release yes and uh, did you get to see why it was dropped um i didn't actually so basically nintendo caught wind uh that they were going to do this and they thought it was a really cool idea uh, but they couldn't guarantee that that would that that feature would be there for all revisions of the N64. Mm. The next revision that was coming out actually was only would only hold it there for it was some tiny amount of time, like five seconds, two seconds, or okay. something like that. Yeah, it was it, it was just it was it was too fast to be reliable, mm-hmm. um, and so that's why they had to scrap it. Hmm. Um, it was actually going to be potentially link linked into Donkey Kong 64 as well. They had an ice key reference and code on that one. Hmm. What what kind of things did it unlock? Do you know, in the Xbox? Live? Um, it so I didn't get to use it this time for some reason. It didn't pick up on my Kazooie save, but I the last time I had tried it out, I got to I got to do it. Um, so if you, I'm guessing you encountered uh, Humba Wumba in the Overworld when she's like, "Oh, you need the Mega Globo." Mm-hmm. Ah. So the Ice Keys used to get the Mega Globo. Um. You can get some other. You can get like a new move, the Briegel Bash, um, Homing Eggs, which would have been useful probably. Um, and then you can unlock the Jinjo as a multiplayer character. Oh, oh okay. So, like, just and some I little. Think, like a gamer pick and an Xbox theme. Okay. That's cool. Homing Eggs are in the game, aren't they? Mm, not that I had. Mm. I also did. They're the gold ones. I thought. I also didn't unlock them. Oh no, I that's the rapid fire. That's eggs. the rapid fire ones. No, nope, sorry. Okay. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. Um. So the the music was composed by Grant Kirkhope, uh, who yes, previously worked on soundtrack. He worked on Perfect Dark, Donkey Kong sixty four, Banjo Kazooie as well. Um. And Banjo Tooie was a much larger game, and it had twice the memory space in the cartridge. Um. And it was. They were able to use that for sound effects and music, and that's how they were able to um, do the uh, the fade of the music when you go to different locations. Huh. Because I had larger memory. I, hmm. 
That's what I read. That was a feature in the first one. Was it? Like if you trans if, when you would go into water or things like that, the music would transition to sound different. Hmm. Yeah, like a different. Theme maybe of the maybe same the song. fade was able to be better or something. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I don't even. Uh, re- so let's talk about some release and reception really quick. So it sold more than three million copies worldwide. Received sevens, eights, and nines, mostly eights and nines from critics. Uh, a lot of comparisons to Kazooie and DK sixty four. Uh, some mentioned that it had less backtracking than Donkey Kong 64. Uh, several mentions, of course, to how large the game worlds were for the time. It was also brought up that it was a massive time investment for the player. Um, it would require them to like keep track of things or have a photographic memory, was a quote what? that someone said. Uh, what? M- and I'm sure we'll talk about that. <laughs> Most of the pros were things like rich textures, long drawing distance, real-time shadow generation, uh, the writing and the humor of it. Uh, one of the big cons that a lot of people brought up, surprisingly, was the frame rate on the 64 version. It Mox, doesn't look good. Did you have problems with frame rate specifically, like the game slowing yes. down? Yes. Okay. Well, and I mean, it's hard because I'm playing it, you know, what, like 20 years later, so it doesn't look mm-hmm. as good as my memory, but it was hard to play at times because a lot of the, like, monsters would still be moving, but I can't, like, pan around to see them fast enough because right. everything's kind of chugging. Yeah. Um, there would be no Banjo 3 at least yet. Um, the game, like we've already mentioned, got an Xbox Live Arcade release, which had better frame rate and uh, HD graphics. And if oh my you gosh. have a newer Xbox, an Xbox One X or better, you can play it in 4K as well. Does it actually have 4K textures? I don't think it has 4K textures. Oh. It probably upscales what? or does some oh, okay. fancy stuff. Oh, so I, now... I want to see them like next to each other, the it N64. Is, it is time to do our personal takes. <laughs> and I would like to start with I think I feel like Mox, I feel like you're gonna have a better view of it than Austin. So let's kind of start with Austin. I kind of want to go last, but I can go first. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll go that. first. I, then. Go first. I, I have I, I have first. a written statement. Oh, oh my okay. God. let me let me go then. Um so yeah, this is um how do I say this? This is probably the worst game I have played in a while. <laughs> um and that's not like you know, you don't go out of your way to play bad games, right? But no. But honestly, it was just not for me. Um, definitely one of the worst games of, as part of a video game club for me personally. I felt like the game was very withholding uh, of Jiggies. It it didn't respect your time. Um, the dialogue to me wasn't that interesting. The Jiggies were not fun to acquire. I literally had no fun acquiring any of them. Like. The mini games were just kind of blah, like the regular way of acquiring them. It just, it was not good. I didn't like that there wasn't no like hints, um, like how Super Mario 64 has like, even if it's, I know it's like so small, but just like, oh, on top of the mountain, you know, something like that. There was nothing like that. You just kind of had to run around in the world, hope that you get some sort of hint that leads you to a jiggy. And what I mean by withholding is you had to do a lot of work for one jiggy. Like a ton of work. And don't even get me started about the stupid factory, which is just awful. <laughs> uh, most of the levels were, in my opinion, way too big and were very samey. Like a, like a lot of the parts looked very similar. Overall, like my personal take would be to give this game a 3 out of 10. And if you are someone who loves this game and you haven't played it in the past five years, please, or like maybe a little bit longer, but please play it again and and tell me what you think. And after that, if you've played it and you still love it, please tell me why you love this game. Um, we were going to have a guy on who unfortunately couldn't make it. He's been a guest before, Mr. Prague. Um, this is one of his favorite games, and hopefully he'll be able to uh, chime down in the comments or in Discord and, and let us know like after listening to this what makes this game so special for him. Uh, Mox, I'd like to jump to you just because you have some nostalgia for this game. I never played it. I did play the first one growing up. I never played the second one uh, growing up, so that could be part of it. I could see how if you kind of know where all the jiggies are or know how the gameplay loop works or know how the maps are connected, that it would be like kind of a more of maybe an enjoyable experience. But it was not something for me. And... um. I was messaging Austin while playing through it, and it was just like we 
he finished it and he had this huge like relief from it and then whenever he helped me finish it and i was i was happy to be done playing this game i am glad i played it um i really am but it is just not something i had fun with mox (laughs) (laughs) I, i regret picking this game as a video game club game because i do have a lot of nostalgia for it and thus i thought oh my gosh i haven't played it in so long you know, I'll love it again like I did back then. Yeah. And I didn't. I think for the same reasons as you. I mean, and it doesn't help that I've been playing Nier, which is, I mean, not a similar game, but has like kind of, it's like an evolution to me of the same concepts of Banjo. Mm. And so like, oh my God, my cat. Uh, <laughs> Banjo 2, you, you have a lot of mobility, but like you said, everything's so big. So it takes forever to get between places. Whereas, like, for example, in Nier, you have way more mobility and everything's kind of a little bit closer together. So I feel like I have a lot more master of the like the map. Um, I like the moves. I, I guess it's hard to I, I feel like I, all I'm doing is comparing Banjo-Tooie to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, but and Banjo-Tooie's better. That's fair to do. <laughs> something <Yeah. clears throat> just real quick, something that I think is interesting is uh, and I heard this on a podcast uh, like yesterday, I think. You know how typically, like, the sequel will be significantly better than the original game? Like, Assassin's yeah. Creed, for example. Assassin's Creed 2 is, yep. like, way better than Assassin's Creed 1. I think everyone agrees with that. Um, I know a few people who, like, vehemently disagree with that, but... Okay, but majority... For that is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this is one of those special cases where, like, the, the sequel didn't, is not an improvement of the first one. Like, if you could play Kazooie and Tui... Which one would you pick to play, you know, for example? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, Mox, well, keep going. I would pick two I would pick Tui because mm. I mean I, I like I was saying before the stream, there's a lot of like quality of life improvements like you were talking about with jiggies. In Banjo Kazooie, every time you get a jiggy, you have to stop and Banjo does like a little dance and then Kazooie eats the jiggy. But in this game you can get a jiggy and then that's it. And, get not, the and not realize in that you got game, one because no action occurs. That I, I ran into no that. celebration after you I, put all this work in for a single jiggy. I it's just this non-event. <laughs> I ran into that whenever uh, I was trying to just I was trying to get to fifty-five as fast as possible uh, towards one part of the game, and I was like, okay, did I? And I was talking to someone while I was playing it, and I was like, did I get this jiggy? I don't know because there was not a celebration. Like, <laughs> it didn't stick out at all. Anyway. Well, I guess, like, I, and I don't want to take up too much time, but I, no. I'm thinking of it when I was a kid, and, you know, I got to play the different areas, and each area is so different, and I mm-hmm. like that when you walk up to an area, the music changes to be, like, the Gruntilda, or I'm sorry, the Grunty, whatever, overworld music themed with the level music, and so, I mean, that was, like, got me excited, I got to get into the level, see what was new, there's, you know, there's always NPCs in the level that you can talk to, but also different set, like, theme of monsters, and my favorite level is Cloud Cuckoo Land, which is the best video game level ever of anything. Um, the music's fantastic, but I comparing it to like everything I've played in the intervening twenty years, uh, it's not as good. I I like my old, I like my newer games. I wouldn't play this game again. I regret having played it because now I feel like I have tarnished my memory of it. And it didn't help that I played it on my N sixty four, where I see it's all by little old you know files. But it kept crashing. I think it's related to my controllers. Like whenever, the, like for some reason, my controller connection was iffy. And so whenever the N64 mm. detected that a controller was pulled out, it would just shut down. And this game is not forgiving about like auto save. Like you have to save, go out of your way. And I did the not N64 do that. The N64 is really weird with controllers. What is I had that? a similar issue huh. where I had a bad controller that kept my N64 from working with any game. And I thought it was my 64. And when I finally got a new controller, it like I, I I got a new 64 and that wouldn't work and I was like what the heck is going on and I tried a new controller and everything worked and I tried uh. on the old N64 and everything worked. This controller was preventing the the system from turning on games. Like I that is bizarre. I, it, it must have something to do with how it pulls from uh, that is so bizarre the expansion port on the back of the 64 controller. Mm. Like it has it must have some dependency there. Hmm. Well, I now that you say that, I mean, it makes total sense because I, I just kept crashing. And then in Grunty Industries, when you it's like you build up as you go up, you know, kind of in the area. And if you crash at any point, you have to start the whole thing over. And it was horrible. So mm. I, I can't rate it because 
I can't separate like the really high nostalgia, like memory factor from mm -hmm. how much I hated playing this game. But, now. but, but Mox, I have an Excel sheet of all your ratings. I need something. Ugh. Well, which do you want me to rate it on? Which scale? You, how, how you felt this time. How yeah. I felt this time? Yeah, this time. Probably, uh, and, and I'm going to take away the, the controller thing because that wasn't the game's fault. But even still, I think it'd be like a three. It was really hard. Ooh. to. I know the graphics weren't very good. Um, it was hard to see. Everything felt very blurry, even like comparing it to other um, N64 games. And it was hard. Like you're, like the um, frame rate was definitely noticeable, especially playing on my, you know, 144 hertz <laughs> monitor. I'm used to that going back down to whatever that was. Nothing. Yeah. So I'm sad, but I like it still. I think it's a good game. One thing I just remembered while I was watching the footage while listening to you is that they they had these like uh, fake Jinjos. Minjos. Oh my god. And they were so Those were the worst. Loud. They were so <laughs> They call out more than the regular Jinjos. Oh, and, and they're then, hard to kill. And they respawn yeah. after seconds. They don't go away. So like every time you're like, oh maybe maybe I did miss a Jinjo in this area. That looks very similar to every other area of this level because this game looks similar everywhere and then you're like you're like oh no no it's this like fake jinjo that's just trolling me um ace unbound said uh nostalgia is a hell of a drug and i, I completely <laughs> agree with that and i think mox got a little taste of that uh, no. for this pick well but you guys have picked games that were from your childhood as well excited to replay them and you guys were like yeah this is great and now i feel so sad that it was the same <laughs> oh austin Let's hear your statement. Mr. Jiggy, give us the uh, give me, us the prepared statement. Let me preface this by explaining my uh, my history with the series just a little bit. I played Kazooie on 64 when I was a kid. I did not really love it that much until I played it on 360. Oh. Years and years later, I suddenly rediscovered it and it was just like, this game is amazing. Um, so I don't believe that I like that game out of nostalgia. Okay. Um, and people like to tell me that that's the only reason that I enjoy Kazooie, and I don't. I don't believe that at all. I, to this day, I can replay it um, and have a good time. I, I, every every few years, I, I like to give it another play, and it's just like a it's a great comfort game for me. Um, now, I did not play Tui as a kid, and I this is my first time playing it through from start to finish. Every time I've kind of tried to start it, I've just fallen off for some reason, and I, this time I figured out why. So, with that out of the way, let me go ahead and read <laughs> my prepared statement, because I really, it was very important to me that I illustrate why I hated this game oh, after Mox told me it. that it was going to be better than Kazooie. Okay. Banjo-Tooie is the result of trying to improve on something amazing without understanding what made the original so good. This game has one less level, ten less jiggies, and yet it takes several more hours to complete. Because the game is discouraging, tedious, and most of all, withholding. <laughs> in, in Kazooie, along with another celebrated 3D platformer, Mario 64, Jiggies and Stars can be often seen just sitting out in the world, giving you a clear objective and only leaving you with the question, how do I get there? Tui hides almost all of its Jiggies, asking you instead to do long, multi-part quests, and for some reason, the Jiggy celebration has been removed, so getting a Jiggy feels like an anti- it just feels anticlimactic after all that work. Mm -hmm. The first time you visit a level, you can play for an hour and not get a Jiggy, <laughs> because the levels are so huge and confusingly laid out. Or three- Grunty Industries- Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I was gonna say, or three hours, but I think you're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Grunty Industries is an especially big offender here, with several floors that all look similar and arbitrary restrictions on how you can travel to different floors as different forms. Speaking of form restrictions, remember in Kazooie when Mumbo would transform you into whatever the animal form was for the level you were on, and you'd decide it was time to leave the level? He'd give you a warning that you were about to transform back, and if you kept moving away from the level, you'd return to your original form. Oh. Yes, and it would behoove oh you to gosh. do that sometimes. Oh no, I know what you're going to talk about, and it's so frustrating. <laughs> In Tui, you cannot leave the level until you travel wherever you need to go to get back to your original form. So that means if you've been transformed by Humble Wumba, you need to find your way back to her wigwam, which is especially annoying when you can't use the warp pads. 
Thanks, Grunty Industries. Uh -huh. <laughs> Playing as Mumbo, you need to go back to his skull to take control of Banjo and Kazooie, and he doesn't have all the moves that they have to make traversal easy. <sighs> yes. One of the worst situations, you've split up Banjo and Kazooie, and their solo movesets make a lot of areas unreachable, especially early on. So trying to get back to the split pads where you left the other character sucks. The new moves are not fun for the most part, and only serve to handle very specific situations, usually to get jiggies from previous levels. Which is another major gripe for me, you cannot complete any level without visiting another level first. You know, <laughs> you know one of the only things that I didn't like about Banjo-Kazooie? The very rare occasion that you needed a move from an, a later level to get a jiggy. But it was rare. Here it's present in the very first level and it just gets worse as you get further into the game. Even more frustrating, moves are often located in spots where you don't even need to use them, which means that when you find the move, you have to connect the dots and how it would be useful without any sort of demonstration or a spot to try it out nearby. Notes, which are one of the best ways to reward exploring all the nooks and crannies in Kazooie, have been made essentially meaningless in Tui by being nested together, so collecting them feels like a non-event. They're also just and not even hidden at all. Like, there's no... No, they're just, like, just mark like, the path. Yeah. Yeah. And the trouble clefts, you know, they're so many. It's like, why bother having them if you're gonna... <sighs> why not just have, you know, they're, five they're more They're pointless. Notes? Yeah. Combat was never a strong part of the Banjo series, but it feels especially bad here. Mm. Enemies respawn very quickly and make annoying sounds, especially the fake Jinjos, <laughs> as they keep whistling and calling out, hey, even more often than the real Jinjos. Help me. Help. And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then reward you for going out of your way to try and collect a Jinjo with a troll fake out. There are no invincibility frames in this game, oh. which means a single enemy can wipe your health bar in no oh. time if you have a bad encounter. You're just making me remember all the things that I forgot to bring up that I hate. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you can heal up with honeycombs, True. except that's also been made frustrating. There are two new types of honeycomb that lock oh. you into place and have you do a mini game to time a button press, which determines how much health you'll and? get. Except, wait, you can also lose health. Yep, and their speed changes. Did you notice that? Yes, it's not consistent. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Shoot, I Sorry, lost my spot. You're yes. You're, you're so you can also lose health in these minigames, and more often than not, I lost quite a bit of health trying to time it so that I would gain something, mm -hmm. and I, I would end up losing most of my health. Less important to the gameplay, but still important to the series, Tui sees Banjo's voice changed for everything outside of dialogue, as in his walking around, climbing, and attack sounds, etc. And they don't match up with his dialogue voice, no. and they sound stupid. <laughs> Grunty no longer taunts you throughout the game, and she also no longer rhymes, which takes out a lot of the charm right. from her as an enemy. Ooh, good call. The only improvement I felt this game made was in its final quiz, which I will admit was completely stupid in Banjo-Kazooie, and Ugh. felt much more fair here in Tui. It was Even fun. having checkpoints between rounds. Yeah. It was yeah. fun in I actually had fun with that part. Overall, I felt Banjo-Tui was disrespectful of my time, and at all times, I felt frustrated by how much backtracking and work I needed to do for such small rewards. Yeah. This game makes me, oh, sorry. This game makes me glad that there was never a Banjo Three, and I now consider Banjo to be a one-game franchise. <laughs> if Banjo oh Three gosh. was announced today, I would have absolutely no hype for it, even if it was made by the original team, because I don't think they have an understanding of what made Kazooie as good as it is. I give this game a 4 out of 10 mm. simply because it functions well and I didn't encounter any bugs or technical issues. Mm. And I subtracted an extra point because it killed my hype for the series as a whole and wasted <laughs> over 16 hours of my time. Oh. <laughs> I will also say I forgot to note here in my in my script that um, literally the very first thing that you encounter when you start the game as you leave your house is the boulder that the fish is under yep. yeah. that you can't open up. The very mm -hmm. first thing they do is go, hey... Here's something that you can't open up well, until you get a, like three levels into the game. It's pretty hard. <laughs> they're teaching the you the language of the game yeah. that it's going to be extremely withholding yeah. and frustrating. They just want to start that out. Yeah, you know? exactly. Also, <laughs> also, um, the fish does make swimming a lot better, but it does. But come not on, great. Yeah. Especially considering like the swimming controls are inconsistent. Like <sighs> they're 
yeah. They're bad controls, and then they swap the controls whenever you send Kazooie out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For some reason. Okay. Anyway. I would like to go around the horn, and everyone say one good thing <laughs> about this game that they liked. And I will start by saying that I thought the dinosaurs, whenever you transform to a dinosaur, were the baby dinosaur was pretty cute. That's my... That's a good thing about this game. Cute dinosaur. I was really mad at that dinosaur transformation because I walked around that whole level trying to figure out what I could do as that baby dinosaur because <laughs> I didn't encounter the triceratops that would teach you the growl. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to learn the growl. And then you have... You, you don't know uh, Morse code? You got to do Morse code on that door. <laughs> um, that's But th that's a complaint. I want to I hear a positive. It is. No, I was just noting your... Yeah. Uh, when you you talked about something that it, it just triggered me for a second. <laughs> what's your what's your my, positive? My favorite thing yeah. is the music. I still listen to the music. It's on my whatever, you know, my shuffle, as they say. Mm -hmm. I just love it. Every single song. Like I don't think there's a single song. Every single song? Yeah. Especially the, the music for the for Terry Dactyl Land. You thought that was good music? I do. That makes me sad that you didn't like it. Uh, Austin, let's see. Tyler, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, here? I do. I Okay. <laughs> what don't you like I, about it? Go put on the music for Terry Dactyl in and tell me tell me that you and like put it. Put a ten hour loop. I don't on think it that too. you know that song I right can, now. <laughs> I can I can hear it in my head. With like the <laughs> opening sounds. Yeah. I, I, you don't Austin, like it? give us a positive thing about Banjo I liked the quiz. The quiz. It was oh. a good quiz. You already said that. End. A new one. A new one. I don't have a new one. I did not like this game. <laughs> I did not like anything about this game except the quiz. I, I didn't. I, if I had known I was going to have to say another good thing, I would have withheld that. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, what, what a, <laughs> made it work for it. What, what a theme for this for this uh, episode. Oh Withholding. Um. Ugh. So yeah, that was uh, Banjo Tooie. If you enjoyed hearing us discuss Banjo Tooie and want to join us for the next Curious game, complaint. stay put because our next regular video game club vote just ended. And it was between Sonic Adventure, Fez, and Anodyne, which were all games uh, suggested by Austin. And Austin, we are in a very rare situation where Sonic Adventure and Fez are tied. Yes. So uh, since both were so popular, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do Sonic Adventure first. Mm. And then the next time my pick rolls around, we're just going to do Fez and skip the vote. All right. Uh, and then whenever it comes around again for me, I'll I'll put up some new games so, to vote for. Sonic Adventure, if you're going to play it, um, there's an Xbox Live Arcade version. There's a PC version. Uh, something I found out about the Xbox Live Arcade version, by the way, is that the DX to get it to make it director's cut is DLC. Yeah. So um, if you want that, just know that you're going to have to pay. I think it's eight dollars total for all of it. I'll also understand that the Xbox Live Arcade version is um, it's like a port of a port of a port oh of a God. port. And it, it it's the most problematic version of that game. So um, yeah. and that's the Steam version is a port of that port. OK, so if you're playing on Steam, basi basically the oldest version that you can play is going to be the, 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 the best one. GameCube or uh, uh, but Dreamcast. obviously. Drink, Dreamcast mainly, okay. but I know that's going to be hard for a lot of people to do. So just we'll just play whatever you can access. But okay, just know, just know that. Well, thank you everyone who voted. Um, it's really good turnout. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone for joining. Again, just as a reminder, you can catch us here on twitchtv TV every two weeks at two Eastern, with the next stream being on May twenty third. Or if you can't make the live session, don't worry, you can find us up on YouTube. Now, before we leave Austin. What is Bombchu working on? Anything that we should be on the lookout for? Should be a humble choice video coming out today. Um, we've got uh, maybe a new episode of Crampy Speedruns mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. And uh, I've, I've, I've got another video that's been getting teased in the Bombchu Discord that uh, are, it's in the very early stages. It's gestating in my mind. Awesome. I also have a teasing video that I've been talking about for a while that it's not has not been completed, but one day. Um, Mox, any plugs? Play more near. Play more near automata. Austin, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Of course, Mox, thank you. Thank you. I'm Tyler. This was Video Game Club, episode 23, Banjo Tooie. 
and we're out. I'd like to give a special shout out to Michael Slater, Blake Harms, and all of our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you, and thank everyone for watching.